You should let yourself be happy regardless of whether or not you feel that you deserve to be happy. I was just having this conversation with somebody close to me who says that whenever she has the opportunity for something good in her life, she tends to sabotage herself. And she's noticed this pattern because she feels that she's not worthy. She feels that she's bad because, you know, people told her nasty things in the past and she's come to believe it. She's come to believe these bad things about herself. And so I told her that maybe she should let herself be happy regardless of whether or not she feels that she deserves to be happy and she thought that was really helpful so she actually recommended that I, I share that with other people so that's what I'm doing in this video. And I think this is actually a very common tendency that when you have the opportunity for a good job or to start a business or to start a great relationship, then you do things to mess it up for yourself. And you know that you're doing things that are going to harm the relationship or harm the job or harm whatever opportunity you have for happiness or success in the future, but you continue to do them anyway. You know, it's kind of funny how we think that we have control over our mind because we think that we are our mind, that our mind is us, but then oftentimes our mind completely runs away without us, right? We, we completely lose control over it. So it may be that some part of you wants to be happy and at the same time, another part of you wants to punish you for doing some bad thing in the past, which may be real or may be imagined. Or it could even just be a generalized sense of guilt that's not attached to any particular action, just this idea that you're a nasty person and you deserve to be punished just for your being a nasty person. And you may not be fully conscious of this, right? So if you have not had the success in your life that you've wanted to have, and you can identify that it's because of a certain set of actions or uh, lack of actions on your own part, you recognize that you haven't been doing what you need to do to be successful or to be happy or to have the relationships you want or whatever, then you might consider that this might be the reason that you have some sort of internalized guilt that won't let you do what you need to do to live the life that you want to live. I think Protestant theology offers a really good answer for that. And for you guys, I can hear you groaning all the way over the internet. You're like, oh, here he goes talking about religion again. Well, your practical results in life and your religion are inseparable, right? They are tied to one another and you cannot possibly separate them. And it doesn't matter how rational and earthly and materialistic your goal might be. I mean, if you want to get a million dollars in a big mansion on the beach, for example, well, you're not going to be able to do that if you have guilt that is holding you back from doing the things that you need to do to have your goal of having a million dollars in a mansion on the beach, right? So your problem is a spiritual problem. Even though it has a practical manifestation, the root problem is spiritual, and you're not going to fix the practical problem if you can't fix the spiritual problem, because that's the root. And of course, a spiritual problem requires a spiritual solution. So really, it's like that parable about the man who built his house on the rock versus the man who built his house on the sand. And if you're unfamiliar, um, you know, the, the guy whose house on the rock, the, the winds and the waves and the storm came and his house stood steady. And the man who built his house on the stand, his house was washed away. So if you're trying to develop yourself, or you're trying to develop the results in your life, or you're trying to do something big, and you have no spiritual foundation, well, that's like building your house on the sand. If you're trying to build a dream of making money or making an impact or getting famous or whatever your, your goal, your worldly goal might be on a spiritual foundation of sand, well, one, you're probably never going to succeed in building it in the first place, and two, even if you do succeed, eventually the wind and the rain and the hard time are going to come and they're going to wipe out everything that you built for yourself. So I've said it before and I'll say it again, don't ignore this part, it is of utmost importance. Anyway, so the Protestant idea of whether or not we deserve to be happy is that all of us do not deserve to be happy, right? We're all sinners in the eyes of God, all have fallen short of the glory of God, and none of us deserve heaven, none of us deserve salvation, none of us deserve to be happy. Right? Which I think is a great place to start because a lot of us feel that way anyway. A lot of us have that gnawing feeling that we don't deserve whatever it is that we want out of life. But here's the second part, is that even though we don't really deserve anything good because we're weak and we're useless and we fall short constantly, we are saved by grace, by the mercy of God, despite all of our weaknesses and all of our flaws and all of our shortcomings, and we are allowed to be happy anyway. And what we need to do to be happy, or to go to heaven, which is really just a way of saying how to be happy after this life is over, but it's the same concept, what we need to do to be happy is to confess our sins and to repent. That is, to recognize that we did something wrong, 
and then commit to stop acting that way. And I think even just from a practical perspective, I'm not even saying whether or not this is true or not. I'm saying just pure usefulness. This is a wonderfully liberating way to look at it because if you try to tell yourself that you do deserve good things and that you are a good person and that you are worthy, well, some part of your subconscious is going to say, no, you're not. Look what you did to that person last week. You're a nasty human being. You deserve to suffer. I I've personally found that trying to delude myself that I am better than I actually am is really difficult and doesn't work very well. So this just admitting that you were flawed and you were weak and you fall short of the glory of God, but recognizing that you can be happy and successful despite all those faults is just so incredibly liberating. And churchy people like to talk about this in terms of going to heaven or going to hell after you die, but it's equally applicable to being on earth. In fact, my belief is that earth is kind of a simulation of the spiritual world. It's a kind of a safer environment where the extremes are not as extreme, right? The suffering on earth is not as, not as bad as the suffering in the spiritual place, and the pleasures on earth are not as pleasurable as the pleasures in the spiritual place after we die, after, we, after our spirit leaves our body. And the world is kind of a simulation where we can learn without the consequences being quite as bad as they would be if we were subjected to the full normal reality. The same concept if you're, you're doing a flight simulator, if you're in a, a machine that simulates flying an airplane. Well, if you crash the airplane in the machine, then, then probably you feel bad, but you'd feel a whole lot worse if you crashed a real airplane. So in the same way, we have this physical life in order to learn how reality works, but in a safer environment because we're not really at the point where we can handle the full reality, just like somebody who's training to be a pilot is not yet at the point where you trust them behind the, the controls of a real airplane. And you can see how this works on the earth. If you feel hate, if you feel anger, if you feel jealousy, if you feel guilt, then you're going to be unhappy, right? And you don't feel that unhappy, and it's not that immediate, right? I believe that the spiritual world is a lot more immediate than the physical world, where you can be sitting on a beach drinking a margarita and start having nasty, hateful thoughts, and you're probably going to ruin the experience for yourself, right? I mean, I've ruined a lot of what should have been good experiences because I was having those kind of thoughts. But the difference is that having those thoughts while you're sitting on the beach drinking a margarita does not transport you immediately to hell. Right? You're still sitting on the beach sipping a margarita. Your life is not that bad, even though you're in a bad mood. So in that way, the, the consequences of your intentions, of your attitudes, are attenuated, shall we say. I mean, your thoughts create your things. Your attitude creates your reality on Earth. But it's a little slower and it's a little less absolute. But anyway, you can be forgiven at any time you want. All you have to do is confess your sins and repent, right? Recognize that you're doing something wrong and then commit to stop doing it. And it doesn't work the way that earthly justice works, where if you kill somebody, then you go to prison for 50 years, right? You get a specific sentence. It's completely dependent on your attitude. The punishment lasts as long or as short as it takes you to change. I mean, it reminds me of the story in the Bible where the, the thief who is hung on the cross beside Jesus uh, recognizes that he deserves to be there. He says, we deserve our punishment, but this man has done nothing wrong. And Jesus responds to him, today you will be with me in paradise. And that's the way that we should live our lives. It doesn't matter what you did in the past. It doesn't matter how horrible you may have been. As soon as you recognize your mistakes and commit to change, you are completely absolved of all wrongdoing and you can be happy from that point forward. What you deserve, or do not deserve, is completely irrelevant. In fact, the Bible says, judge not, saith the Lord. Right? And the, other, the Bible also says, uh, love your neighbor as yourself. Right? So, if you are equal to other people, you're supposed to love people as yourself. You're not supposed to judge other people because that's the Lord's job. Well, you're also not supposed to judge yourself. I mean, you should recognize your own shortcomings, just as it's perfectly reasonable to recognize others' shortcomings, but to dole out justice on yourself is just as bad as trying to dole out justice on other people. It's not your job. Your job is to live the fullest, happiest life that you possibly can. So stop judging yourself, stop making yourself miserable, stop sabotaging yourself, because God forgives you.
All you have to do is recognize your mistakes and stop doing them, which is exactly what it takes to be happy anyway. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, then please share it with other people who might be able to benefit from it. Do me a favor, hit the thumbs up button so YouTube likes me better. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and I think you'd also really enjoy this video all about the eight things that you need to do in order to have rock solid confidence.